All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Florencio Files. Down here in the bottom left hand of Jaganatha, this is Why You Know GG, aka Florencio, the cheesy bastard himself. His opponent in the top right. Hey, maybe we've got a Christmas special here? Maybe? It's the Christmas movie that's only a Christmas movie's protagonist uh, because it was held at Christmas? I don't know. Anyway, it's John McClane. So we've got Bruce Willis up here. That kind of looks like Bruce Willis. Yeah, like a badass version. Uh, maybe some more ho, ho, ho. Now I've got a machine gun action in this game. What is Florencio doing, by the way? He's going gas first. He sent a really early SCV across the map. What's he up to? Is he going to do some harassment, maybe? Maybe just scouting? It's Florencio scout now. Taste my drill. Okay, he's going to get on in there and uh, see if he can do a bit of harassment damage. Not bad at all. Now, for those of you just tuning in, uh, maybe this is the first time you've watched the Florencio Files. Basically, um, StarCraft is the most competitive esport out there in the world. If you guys didn't know that, uh, super high. I mean, it's it's a very competitive, awesome RTS game. It's it's an amazing uh, game of skill. There's there's top pro players who earn their living do it doing it, and then there's people like Florencio. Um, uh, how, how do we describe Florencio to someone who's not initiated? Um, you know, like the monkey with the symbols that runs around? Um, it's like if you took that, you gave it crack, and it slowly turned into kind of a combination of the monkey just mindlessly banging symbols and the uh, demon out of it. If you put those two together, uh, it's got a healthy love of torture. Speaking of torture, oh, that SCV got blocked there. Hey, he picks up a kill, not too bad. I think he lost his SCV as well, so it is a one-for-one -one trade. As uh, looks like this guy here, this one of John McLean's did take him out. So yeah, essentially we get to watch, um, you know, the, the most skilled competitive RTS in the world. And we get to watch the guy who plays it like he's permanently uh, drunk off of his opponent's sadness. I, oh, hold on a second. Did he just make an orbital command at 2 minutes 10? Within 30, 35, 40 seconds of when, when you're supposed to? Oh my god! He's actually building an economy, guys. He's built an expansion at a pretty decent time. And he's got an orbital on the way. Florencio. Wow, off the chain here. He's uh, he's even building a second Reaper. He's going to do a Reaper pressure. He's got a factory down at a decent time. Tech Lab. I I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. I just know that, honestly, I mean, sharing that bunk bed with Clem, doing that uh, three-month uh, sleepover slash training camp. I'm not sure how they're branding it. Let's be real. Be hanging out with Florencio. You're mostly just hanging out watching uh, videos of, like, cats playing the piano and, uh, you know, making guac, uh, watching reruns of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Dexter. What other TV shows? I mean, we, we've learned a lot about the names of his accounts, I think, from his favorite T-shows, TV shows. I think the Why You Know GG tells us that maybe he's also a parting stream fan. In that case, it's, you know, it's not exactly the same phrasing, Why You Know GG, as opposed to... No GG, fuck you, no GG, which is, of course, the exact parting phrase that he likes to shout at his opponents when they leave games without GGing. But uh, it, it definitely tells us he might be watching a little bit more of that, getting a bit influenced by it. We've got a starboard on the way. Factory's got a tech lab. So he's building Marines out of the tech lab barracks. Are we going to see Marines again? What the, what the hell is this tech lab for? Ah, who knows? Anyway, it was exciting to see Florencio on his foray into Marines last week. And this is actually, by the way, a brand new replay he's just sent me in the last couple of days. So uh, let's see, has he evolved further? And is he gonna show more marine play? He did end up kind of going away with it after that brief Clem-inspired foray into it, but he didn't stick with it very long, right? We had one big fight with the Marines. He did open Hellion Reaper as well, actually, in that game as well, right? So what's the next evolution? Are we sticking with the marine play? I mean, he's still building Marines. You don't need a tech lab to build Marines though. We're not seeing a stim or anything like that. Oh, Reaper. Reaper's coming in. Oh, oh, Reaper already killed something. Oh, we got an SCV. Nice. Okay. So Flo's going to have a little bit of fun here. Did he already lose a Reaper? No, no. It looks like he cancelled the second one. Don't go up there! Oh! McLean! <laughs> oh! He says, take that, strange long-haired man of, of dubious European origin with strange mixed accent. We're not sure if you're Scandinavian or Ukrainian. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, no worries. Good job, good job. Good job, Mr. McLean, who's actually going Mac. Check it out. 
double medevac production. Looks like tanks and Hellion production behind this. This is actually an odd build order from McLean. I wonder, I wonder exactly what he's going for. Uh, why you know GG with the third command center on the way? We've got a second barracks. And, uh... Oh! Oh, damn! This is a pretty quick expand and good macro for McLean, uh, generally speaking, at least. But he's also going for a very cheeky 8 Marine 2 tank drop. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, he's going to miss the command center. Florencio is already going to four command centers at the five minute mark. I think, yeah, these medevacs aren't going to go over there. Oh my god, so he doesn't see the command center in the corner from Florencio. Woo, my mouse just went wild there. What the heck just happened? I have no idea. Uh, anyway, extra barracks on the way. So Flo is going to be going bio this game by the looks of it. He wants to play uh, Marines. Hasn't made any upgrades extra for them just yet. Because this is a really well-timed double drop. This is actually, like, ridiculously crisp. Florencio is actually scanning his opponent. Doesn't really get any info from that. He has no idea about that drop coming in. Ooh, he does have a safety tank. If, if they drop back here, though, they won't be in range. Uh, and that siege tank won't be very effective. If they drop in range, that siege tank might just clean up the whole thing in of itself. Because look at Florencio. Tank on the ramp, tank on the natural, liberate it randomly on the natural. And now he's got a tank in the main. Ooh, let's see. Oh, they drop in range! His tank's gonna clean this up! Look at that! McLean can't even see the siege tank. What? Why did he unsiege it? What? Hold on, instant rewind. Instant rewind. What just happened? Let's watch that one more time. I watched it from J McLean's vision, so we didn't catch the whole thing. Florencio has the perfect tank location. The tank drop. He gets two big shots off. A third one would kill that tank. Then he could finish off the other. He unseizes, pulls back. He's still in enemy tank range. Why did he unseize that tank? He had the perfect defense set up by default. And Fertia's like, no, too easy. If I smack down this guy's attack, he might leave. Unseizes his tank, moves it away. I, I'm, I'm once again baffled by the high level equations going on in Florencio's brain as he finds the uh, most interesting way to win. Oh man, quite a lot of SCVs going down. The Medivac's boosted out of there. These Marines killing a lot of SCVs, dude. That is 10 SCVs killed. That's a, a fantastic trade. And look at that unit's last tab looking great there for McLean, who's gonna fly home with those medevacs. Wait, wait, wait. He's gonna, he's queued the medevacs back to safety and he's gonna spot the command center as well in the process of it. However, as good as that drop was and as hilarious as Florencio moving his tank around was, keep in mind, Florencio is almost at equal workers and he's got third command center, building an orbital and a fourth. Four orbitals, no planetaries! We're getting a game where Flo's not relying on planetaries, guys. He's relying on orbitals this time. Oh, okay, so he scans. He sees lots of aliens and tanks. He knows he's up against mech. He still hasn't really built any actual bio. He's just building like two unupgraded marines at a time, building some tanks. Whereas this is a proper mech setup for this other player. McLean is building a third command center, two factories, one building Hellions with the minerals, one building tanks. He's got some Vikings coming out as well. The medevac spotted the command center, so it's now lifted off and he's going to fly away. Is he going to land that on one of these? Where, where, where is he told it? Let's, let's see if we can find the move command. Look for a little green circle. Little green circle will tell us where he's clicked it. Uh, I don't see a little green circle anywhere. <laughs> I'm like, what? Maybe he's clicked it into the dead space and it doesn't show up on this ground or something. Oh shit, he's pushing! Oh, look at that! He baits the Hellions into the tanks. Okay, nice little push here from Flo. I think he lost one siege tank though, so he lost a tank. The Viking's gonna clean up the Liberator. Ah, it's gonna put an end to this push. Look at that, tank spready. Viking's taking out the Lib as well. Flo not able to find any real purchase. He now starts Stim six minutes after building the tech lab on that barracks, and he's building more barracks? Guys! We're going bio. This here is the, the, the second coming of Clemencio. Let's see how he's evolved it. As I say that, he drops a second and third starport. Don't think Marines come out of those. Not, not so sure about that one, man. Not so sure. Okay, he's dropping mules in the corner. He's still scanning. Uh, fourth factory on the way. Starport there pumping. Double armory being built. Wait, 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 wait. He's building both armories with a single SCV. Oh no, McLean, don't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna build an armory and then I'll build another armory. These resources have already been spent like a minute before it even starts building. That's a, not a good habit. It's not a great habit, guys. Don't don't try that one at home. 
Okay, so we've got four Stim Marines at a time while making a battle cruiser transition. Now, there's a lot of normies out there who would say if you're going mech, whether it be sky focused mech, battle cruisers, Vikings, and libs, or if you're going more of a tank Thor factory composition, both styles, very gas expensive, so you want to get either uh, some sort of mineral heavy unit to go with that. Usually that would be reacted factory, you can build Hellions, great harassment unit, nice and tanky. Florencio has said, no, 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 I will make mass Stim Marines. No combat shields for them, because they're not effing cowards. Only sissies hide behind shields. No engineering by upgrades, no plus one attack or armor, or plus two or plus three. And by the way, we're not going battle cruisers. we're making liberators. I'm very confused right now. Uh, my name's Pig, and I will stop trying to understand what's happening, and I will simply just speak about the things that are going on instead, because I, my brain hurts. There's a wrinkle in it now. Ah, uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, earlier today, I was commentating a lot of Bian, uh, Zest, um, <laughs> just to name a few players. Uh, you thermal bunch of, bunch of pretty high level guys. Let's just say that I think those guys are operating under the wrong assumptions, at least under Florencio's, you know, idea of how the game should be played. Fourth Command Center is here. Uh, world Champions. Uh, this, is a, this is a World Champion no-go zone, I believe. We've got Hellions on the left side of the map. They're looking for that corner base, which he scouted 10 minutes ago. 10. I may exaggerate. It was like four. Four? Maybe four minutes ago? He doesn't. He sees it's gone. Florencio playing hide and seek with the command center. Oh my god, how did he know it was here? Florencio moved from there to here. And um, I think his opponent must be a hacker. How did he know? Florencio scanning the front. Oh my god, this is a super meaty mech setup. And the Hellions are going to get on in there. Yamato, three BCs at a time. Okay, so Flo's going to go full battle cruiser. He's got 19 Marines, six tanks, three Liberators, two Vikings. He's going to lose all the workers on that base, but he's got a lot more command centers. His worker count a bit lower, though. So the opponent on 62 SCVs, McLean here, doing pretty well. Three Tech Lab Factories, one Reactor, is now building more starports as well. Ooh, tries to go in, sees the tanks and the libs. So the problem here for McLean is McLean has no idea there's battle cruisers on the way. Uh, on the other hand, the problem for Florencio is this player knows how to macro. Like, let's be real, guys. A lot of the time, Florencio's opponents go, what is this weird stuff he's doing? And they run into his defensive positions, right? That's Florencio's specialty. He set, he digs a pit, he puts some spikes in it, and then he goes, uh, you mum's fat. And the opponent gets angry and runs at him and falls in the spiked pit. That's like, that's like a large portion of Florencio's Terran strategies. You know, and don't get me wrong. Let's let's be right. That's the simplification. He has a lot of insults and ways of toying with his opponent to make sure they get angry and run into that spike pit. That's that's the real art form, is his ability to piss his opponent off. Problem for him, opponent's going to max out real soon, has a fourth command center, and he's making upgrades. We've got 2-2 two, two on the way for mech. There's a good mix of Thors in there, which are not bad. How many Thors have you got? Um, two Thors, but a third one on the way. But they're really good at killing battle cruisers, at, at least in... Eh, medium numbers, if the battle cruiser can kind of Yamato a few of them and teleport away, repair up, they'll obviously be good in the long term. But only if they fly into a lot of Thors, like the Thors will massacre them, especially with upgrades. We've also got a fusion core of their own for John McLean, who's also going for a second tech lab starport and now a third one. And uh, I think Florencio just scanned. They're both scanning each other. Hellion's trying to come in for a bit of harassment. I love that it's all orbitals for Flo because he's actually going to have so much more money available whenever he feels like using it. Hellion's going to drive in, find a whole ton of mules over here. And it looks like a big push on the left side of the map. Florencio has been sitting there all game building up this army, trying to figure out the right composition. I mean, his opponent just is not getting aggressive into him. And this is so different because what, what's Florencio's powerhouse? playing against impatient players who attack with basic units into planetary fortresses. In this case, his opponent is a mech beast who is sitting back and waiting for Florencio to come to him. Florencio has to make the first moves and he's got to get something done. 
Now keep in mind, guys, if you siege tanks in front of a planetary, they won't shoot other units unless you tell them to. He's got to, he's got to retarget them. Okay, he retargets them on the siege tanks there. He's held that some tanks. His battle cruiser's coming on in. The Thors and Vikings doing pretty well, though. Nice Yamatos. Oh, he does get some of these battle cruisers down with the Yamatos. The Vikings taking a lot of the BCs down as well, though. This is a pretty close trade. Oh, he does teleport out, saving a bunch of those valuable battle cruisers. Only loses one BC there. But the Vikings will land. That planetary is going to survive. Vikings landing, cleaning up these tanks very efficiently. And the Hellions at the same time cleaned up that bottom right base, forced it to lift there. Florencio just going to keep dropping that mule hammer on that side. He desperately needs more gas, does Florencio. He never put on this gas geyser. His main and natural are mining. Six on this gas over here since uh, quite a while ago. And it's now... <laughs> McLean's making battle cruisers. All right, we got a battle cruiser war. All right, now, um, still down on SCVs is Florencio. Still has a lot more command centers, though. Keep that in mind. And planetaries aren't orbitals. Also, by the way, love the random turret spam. <laughs> in the back of the base. It makes sense because BCs can teleport. So the one time it actually makes sense. Flo's going to make his own Thors and battle cruisers. Thors, like we said, pretty good versus BCs. Um, problem could be the fact that there's plus two armor because... Florencio doesn't make attack and armor upgrades. He just chooses not to. He says, I don't want to make upgrades unless there's a very direct purpose. You know, and, and I think I think what he means is there needs to be like a higher level strategic purpose than doing more damage is good in war. Um, you know, he'll be like, but why? Uh, <laughs> what just happened? Oh, a liberator came in. He, he teleports a battle cruiser to deal with that. So check these stats out, right? So Air to surface, battle cruiser does eight damage a shot. But air to air, that's what ATA stands for. That says five damage over there. Is it that low? Five damage air to air? I thought it was higher than that. I thought it was six. Five? I mean it shoots really fast, but five damage. The base armor on a battle cruiser is three guys. Where are these BCs? These BCs have two armor bonus already. That's five armor. <laughs> For those who don't know, the minimum amount of damage you can do in StarCraft is 0.5. So half a damage. Florencio's damage uh, battlecruisers are doing half a damage a shot to the enemy, battle enemy battlecruisers. It will take 1,100 of Florencio's battlecruiser shots to kill one of McLean's battlecruisers. <laughs> If that sounds ridiculous, it is. 1,100. His battle cruisers, they can use Yamato effectively, but head to head, they will do nothing to those battle cruisers. Not to mention, even their damage versus like Thors and stuff is not going to be very effective. His Thors are in the wrong firing mode. Why has he got them in splash damage mode? He does dodge there, takes one or two Yamatos on the face, but he teleports away the Florencio teleport. He teleports just two screens away. The battle cruisers are going to be able to hunt him down. Oh, the Vikings, they need to lift off. And I think, oh, McLean lifts off only one Viking. Uh, there we go. The other Vikings are going to lift off. Dude, he teleported here. He's going to lose every single battle cruiser. And McLean actually using the Thors in the correct firing mode. They are blasting these BCs. But McLean is right clicking on the battle cruisers rather than moving past them. And because of that, his battle cruisers keep stopping to shoot. So McLean doesn't. Oh, McLean messes up the micro. Let's seven BCs. Guys, in that scenario, you just click your battle cruisers past their battle cruisers because they can move and shoot. But if you tell them to just right click, they'll go up to the battle cruisers, go, cool, we're in range. They'll stop, they'll shoot, and they'll only start moving when the enemy battle cruiser gets out of range of it, right? So McLean there missed an opportunity. Still killed a lot of battle cruisers. Uh, so five Florencio has lost. So not bad, but a base went down, some SCVs, and most importantly, the gas mining there. Because remember, McLean has not put the workers on this gas over here yet. So McLean's still got the way better army. And remember, he's getting plus two ship weapons now as well. So McLean is going to be doing three damage a shot at the moment, right? Because it's it's six damage a shot minus three armor. That's not bad. Um, it's going to be four damage soon. So what's four? That's eight times the damage per shot in terms of effective damage <laughs> for McLean when plus two kicks in. And that means... Wait, wait, wait. If plus three comes in as well, that means you're going to be doing seven, eight. Eight minus three is five. Ten. Ten times. Ten times the damage 
Oh, Yamato's been Florencio. Actually, Yamato's the battle cruisers pretty effectively there. Oh my god, you know what's hilarious? This is the sort of trade that actually is fine for Florencio, because Yamato just does a flat 240 damage. It doesn't care about upgrades, right? So if McLean goes in and just trades Yamato's, Florencio can actually kind of do that okay. Uh, it looked like that was a one-for-one -one battlecruiser trade. But, oh, he's sending tanks in as well. But mass repair on the orbital goes down here for Florencio. Okay, teleports down there, deals with that. So the problem is, if you just trade Yamato's, it's just who can make more battlecruisers and who can spam the Yamato's out quicker, right? But the thing is, if you can chase Florencio down after all the Yamatos have been thrown, because if you think about it, 240 damage per battlecruiser, well, if you've got equal battlecruiser numbers, that means you can maybe kill half of their battlecruisers, or a little bit less than that, really, right? Because um, 240 damage out of 550 hit points, that's 310, made good with number, 310 hit points left. That's a lot of hit points per battlecruiser, right? And if we're doing like half a damage, uh, yeah, it's not going to work out that well, is it? Uh, plus two ship weapons. He's even got plus three vehicle weapons on the way, which will help out with those two Thors, which are, of course, in high impact payload. Now, Florencio does have some Thors. Has he swapped them? No, he's still in splash damage mode. Florencio! Oh my god! Did he not watch that episode? Or is he purposefully spiting me? I was like, you don't want to use splash damage! You, you, and he, you know what? I reckon he wants to use it for the splash damage because he's like, well, there's so many battlecruisers, they're clumping up. Once again, let's crunch the numbers. Battlecruisers are not light units. You don't get that bonus to light. Six damage times four. Hold a second, though. Hold the phone. These guys have six armor. So that's six times half a damage. That means you're doing two splash damage shots. And it's not even that big an area effect. Florencio, did he just teleport in there? Oh my god, Florencio just teleported in. If McLean teleports behind him, Florencio can't escape. McLean, Yamato's two of them, and then just sits. You could chase him! He teleported in! That is objectively the worst way to use battle cruisers in this scenario. The idea is you're meant to dive in and then use teleport to get out of there. Florencio teleports in right next to the enemy army, by the way. Doesn't even check where the army is. And then just drives out. And McLean's letting him get away with it. Dude, you just saw Hans Gruber literally steal a baby out of like a bloody pram or stroller next to you and just run off and go, ah, and then start ripping its limbs off. I don't know, something messed up. And you're just standing there. Don't punish him. Okay, this was this was good. He cleans up all those Thors so efficiently. They managed to do 100 hit points of damage to one battle cruiser. My god, it's so bad. Um, there's mass turret up here. It's going to be kind of hard for Flo to push through, especially if McLean fights with those. But remember, he's got to be careful of the Yamatos. And, and 10 battle cruisers can easy Yamato four of his down. So if McLean is going to go. It's going to be a bit of a base trade scenario right now. Oh, Yamato's coming in. McLean! McLean! Oh my god, the battle cruisers are getting blasted, dude! Oh my god, look how little damage Florencio's doing! Guys, he has 10 battle cruisers! 10 battle cruisers! And they're not doing any damage! Did you see that? Oh my god. <laughs> even even for those who don't know. With Neo Steel armor upgrade, that's five armor. The planetary is taking almost no damage, and this is buying time for these seven, eight range missile turrets to actually get some battle cruiser kills. McLean comes in with one battle cruiser. If he mass repairs a bit more, he might get a few more kills. He's actually doing damage. Look at that, he kills a battle cruiser there, and he teleports home, does Florencio, but he's still outnumbered, guys. There's, oh, actually, he's not. It's nine versus 10 in total. Eight there, seven there. Though I don't know where the rest of Florencio's battle cruisers are. Maybe they're sitting above the production. The, the thing is, right now, these battle cruisers are 2 3 plus 3 weapons now starting for McLean. McLean has such better upgrades, has a lot more gas in the bank. But will McLean be able to kind of handle the stress? Because remember, Florencio has literally nothing on the line in any game he ever plays. All he's doing is trying to crack you and make you break down in the stressful situation. But let's be real, I don't think Florencio has ever cared about losing. He's scanning now, he sees base building there, he sees that there's a new base there. He's looking all around the map. He does see the edge of those battle cruisers with his sensor tower. Both players with some decent sensor towers here. This one's a little questionable, but uh, not too bad. Florencio's got this gas mining up. He's got this gas mining on one of those guises. Meanwhile, where's the, the gas mining at for 
McLean. Those two are fully mining. It's taking gas geysers there, but it hasn't put them on. Those gas geysers not working yet. That one is. Okay, not bad, not bad. Plus three weapons and a battle cruiser on the way. Four marines queued up because Florencio. It's not 17 minutes, but he's going to do it anyway. The battle cruisers coming forwards. And this is honestly, guys, right now. I mean, this is so much worse than Sherman tanks up against Tigers in World War II. These battle cruisers, other than the Yamato, they are useless in a head to head fight against these. And let's look at the numbers 12 versus 13, but there's also nine Vikings as well. Massive, massive advantage. But wait, 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 they've got their guns out. Guys, he pulled out his Punisher cannons. Florencio unzips, pulls out his, uh, his Punisher cannons on the shoulders of those Thors. Shoulder mounted Punisher cannons, and he's ready to do some damage. Um, so the Thors will actually help. Now, they, of course, have such a high damage. 25 a shot. It's not going to get ruined as much by the lack of upgrades. It's still going to go down to 19 a shot, but they shoot pretty fast. They, 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 they change that so it used to be like, boom, boom. And the Thor would just sit there for like three seconds and like, boom, boom. But now they actually shoot really fast. You can almost even stutter step them. You can kind of move and shoot them a little bit as well. It's really damned effective. 13 BCs versus 13 BCs. Plus three ship weapons coming in. Florence here tries to build a command center and it goes down. Turret's trying to build, but they're not ready. Ooh, the Marines coming in for flow. And they do not have upgrades. They also do zero damage. Yamato, though, not caring about upgrades, does snipe that battle cruiser. He's going to take the command center down. McLean here is going to dive down the south side of the map. Both sides are kind of diving into each other's territory. Florencio thinking about clearing up this top left base. There's so many missile turrets there. Missile turrets, I mean, they're, they're still really easy Yamato targets. They're very fragile as well against the battle cruisers. They're not going to do too much. McLean stalled out with his own push. Is a little bit panicked right now, trying to keep these command centers alive, trying to build three more. Honestly, though, I don't think Florencio can win this. Uh, because he, he's going to need to Yamato, disengage, Yamato, disengage. I, I guess it can work if McLean gets distracted and just doesn't Yamato even half as much as Florencio. But I mean, if they, if they just trade things out, when push comes to shove, when there's no teleport, when there's no Yamato ready, Florencio has simply got such a weaker army. These battle cruisers now have plus three. They're going to be doing eight damage minus three uh, armor. That's five a shot versus half a damage a shot. We have 10 times the damage output on McLean's battle cruisers to Florencio's in terms of effective head-to-head -head damage. Oh, the Thor's come down for McLean. But McLean's fighting with only a few units at a time, and Florencio's got a goddamn ghost. He's got a nuke. He's like, well, I can't win with upgrades, but you know what else doesn't care about upgrades? Nukey McNuke's faces. Gonna make us a nuke face. Look at this. These two or three BCs just killed like three of Florencio's battle cruisers. Don't fly into the nuke. Don't fly into the nuke. Oh my god, Florencio here darting on forward. He's losing his production at home. Both sides are in danger of losing their production. McLean can easily fight these Marines, but the Thors could cause problems for him. Yamato does take out one of the Thors. Oh my god, look at the Marines do nothing. The Thors are the only thing that can actually do damage in a pitch battle. Does he have any Yamato? Florencio's out of Yamato. He's dead. He can't fight this. His units don't do any damage. The Thors are the only thing that are actually killing McLean's battle cruisers. McLean is fighting. Three Thors, Ghost, 20 Marines, and eight battle cruisers with three battle cruisers. And look how long it is taking the battle cruisers to die. This is the most comical shit I've ever seen. That battle cruiser is almost dealing more damage than that whole army combined. <laughs> what the fudge? <laughs> What is going on? Oh my god. Okay, so uh, this has got to be a loss for Florencio, guys. I don't think there's any way. He's trying to make reactive factories. Oh, he wants to swap into Widow Mines, the cheeky bugger. He knows they don't care about upgrades either. But the Battle Cruisers have found the factory transition. And I think he's lost all of his SCVs now. I think he's in trouble, guys. I don't think Florencio can win this game from here. Hey, look at how quickly his production dies to those plus three BCs. He's got 13 SCVs that are running away. And he's got 10,000 minerals. That... That maybe could help him out, I guess, but 13 BCs versus 7. I mean, McLean's got a command center there, an orbital there, both with full energy. Can land this or three orbitals. They can drop mules like crazy. Oh, Florencio needs to hunt down these command centers. He's going to rebuild 400 missile turrets and a command center in the bottom right. Try to very slowly rebuild. McLean could land the Vikings. Cleaning up these depots would be huge in this scenario. Makes it so hard to rebuild because then he's going to need to rebuild depots before he can rebuild SCVs. Meanwhile, looks like the command center does land and he drops one mule. It's an interesting choice there, McLean. Um, 
You know you have three full energy orbitals, right? And he's like, nah, I just want to drop one. There we go. That's the mule hammer. <gasps> no! He mule hammered! He mule hammered, guys! But they're all on follow command! That's ten mules, all following only one mule that's mining. I know it's hard to see because the battle cruiser's here. They're all just touching his butt! There's one absolute chat of a mule, and the rest are just his goddamn bitches. Finally, McLean realizes and tells them all, Hey, actually mine, idiots! Oh my god, he just lost like a thousand minerals there. That's, that's actually wild. Um... Okay, so Command Center's going down, bottom right. He's building 400 turrets as Florencio. And now Florencio needs to just do, like, hit and run tactics, surely. Now, he's got ghosts, but there's turrets everywhere. He's got to be real careful. It used to be that battlecruisers had energy, so you could EMP or feedback them. They couldn't Yamato. They took that away because you could essentially um, just do an insane amount of damage to battlecruisers just by feedbacking them. It was too much of a weak point. for used to already be the weakest capital ship by far. Oh, Florencio's gonna go in there. And he just dropped a mule. What's the bet he doesn't have any energy? The ghosts are, are trying to harass the mule line. He doesn't have any energy. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, he just got a scan in the main. Okay. Never say die. Uh, probably not the wisest words right there, buddy. Uh, the Thor and the 400 missile turrets are there. So I think for Florencio, the question is, can he figure out that you can actually fly in, kill units, and then teleport away? Because remember, earlier in this game, ever since it was battlecruiser versus battlecruiser and that was the right tactic he was teleporting in and then trying to walk away and just hoping that mclean didn't just teleport on him and, and corner him right and yamato him and gun him down now he's gonna run into this liberator which will give away what he's doing mclean has doubled the army supply yeah he's down a few workers but like who cares do you know how long a five worker difference is going to take to make up the difference between these guys i mean there's no second and third command center florencio didn't spend his minerals here to build six or seven command centers at once, which you'd maybe think would be the better choice if you really thought about it. And he's sending his Vikings down alone. McLean, why'd he send his Vikings alone? His battle cruisers are the betting. Look how quick they kill the BCs. Unfortunately, though, Yamato's across everything. He gets one battle cruiser. Oh my god, even the Vikings don't take that much damage. That's wild. He's gonna kite these BCs a little bit. The Vikings there. He's trying to do some fancy micro is McLean, but has left, has left has left all 14 battle cruisers back there. Even forces the He teleports in the base. That's it. That's it. McLean can now trap those and kill them. He's already got two battle cruisers over here. Could teleport a bunch of them. He's gonna go for it. Oh, he's gotta chase him though. Remember, he's got a move command after him. He's gotta land those Yamatos. Can McLean catch these? He gets them. Oh, he's got him. He's got him. Okay, Florencio is dead now. He, he manages to take him out. McLean showing the power of upgrades and you can see it in the units lost tab being 13,000 resources more efficient you know this seems like the kind of game i where if, if florencio got the widow mine switch off he totally could have made this happen uh i do actually kind of like the marine run buys and imagine if he still had some of those marines speaking speak of the devil oh he's building more i didn't even realize that was actually i was literally like hey if he was doing some marine run buys that could be actually you know a good run by unit just to kill the economy and if you hide behind your turrets with your Thor, who knows, maybe McLean makes some bad choices and headbutts into mass missile turret, right? He scans that and he's like, yeah, not. Nah, I'm, I'm not gonna, nope. Ooh, battlecruiser. Oh, double Yamato on a BC. McLean though, flies into mass turret there, almost loses one of his own. Florencio says, okay, well, some would say I'm down and out and I should give up, but I would say, Stimpak's one hell of a drug. He's gonna dive in there. His last two battle cruisers are gonna join in as well. Oh my god, he's such a psychopath. He's gonna try and kill it. This is the last command center. This is the last command center, is it? No, 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 wait, there's two more. There's, there's, there's one more command center. There's two command centers in total. He gets a lot of the SCVs. He's trying to get rid of the, the last production so that he can try and force a draw or eke this one out over time. But uh, there's still an SCV, there's still an orbital and another orbital over here. Not to mention, remember, McLean never lost his main base, so he's not supply blocked. Now, McLean could easily just clear up the production, just leave a few BCs at home to defend, send the other half to go pick units off. But McLean, you can tell there's a true turtle mech player at heart, right? McLean has been camping all game long, building layers of turrets. It was tanks, liberators, Thors, and hell, that's just camping. Now playing the battle cruisers is very, very patient. He's going to move out now. Some BCs on the left, some on the right. And Florencio is just going to keep doing marine backstabs. <laughs> He's like, uh, hey guys, uh, here's a rifle, uh, no armor, no upgrades, no combat shields, um, and here's a vial, here's a, here's a bloody needle to shove in your arm so you can pull the trigger faster. 
Uh, also, there will be capital ships um, that literally blot out the sun that will teleport overhead when you go in. So just remember, you are sacrificing yourself for a good cause, buddy. Just keep that in mind. Uh, if this production goes down, that's going to be a problem. He's making Vikings. Is Florencio right now? One Marine comes in for Flo. I think he's trying to bait the teleport. I don't know. He goes in there. And the battle cruisers are coming on in, but the Marines are going to backstab here, trying to be as annoying as he possibly can. Dude, he's going to get it. He's going to get the command center. Where's the teleport? Where's the teleport? One battle cruiser will come in. If he targets the orbital, he might be able to get it. Oh, remember, these, these Marines do literally no damage. Half a damage per shot to these BCs. And goodbye, Florencio's production, which means he can't build any more units. Somehow he got 14 Vikings out in the midst of this. I, off those two starports. I'm amazed he managed to do that. I guess just the amount of gas he's mining there. He's going to keep trying to pick off these BCs a few at a time. But if the, the battle cruisers, I mean, they could, they could just teleport like here, here, here. And there's no escape, right? You're going to get half your Vikings you martyred. That's a big if though, right? Because we've seen McLean is a little sloppy with the battle cruiser micro. So... This could work? It might, it might not. Either way, I think Florencio has a big fat grin on his face because this sort of scrappy, dirty game, he loves this shit. He doesn't care about winning or losing. He just cares about creating chaos. And he's going to look at that. The orbital lifts off. He says, you can run, but you can't hide. Let's it burn down. His Marines on the right side. Oh, he killed the orbital with the Marines on the right side as well. Wait, wait, that was it. Oh, no, 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 this is the orbital. Sorry, that's the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. The Vikings get a BC. They're going to get another BC. No, they teleport to safety, but he's got to teleport more. That's the last command center. McLean. McLean's letting the last command center die. There's not enough money to build another one. That's all of them gone. Okay, now McLean has to win with these battle cruisers, which is still really easy. You just Yamato the turrets down. Even if you use two Yamatos at a time, Flo will never get beyond this base. Like, and he can't even fit production in there. Look, he's trying to rebuild a barracks from scratch. Like, but look at that, Florencio! He finds three Vikings on their own, cleans those up. The battle cruisers come in. He Yamato's a Viking. Very well done from McLean. But he cleans up a few of these. I mean, he just got to keep spamming, spamming Yamato's. Like, there, he's got too many buildings to ever be eliminated. Just bring all your BCs down and just grind Florencio to dust. I still think, I mean, there's no way McLean loses. I guess he's saving the Amados to deal with the Vikings because he doesn't really have a perfect answer to them otherwise unless he does good teleport micro when you, like I said, teleport some on top of it while trying to run the Vikings down. So Because basically what happens is if you attack with the battle cruisers, say the Vikings, they're just going to pull back, shoot, pull back, shoot. So then you've got to teleport maybe half your battle cruisers on top of the Vikings or behind them even, and it's going to like force them to move sideways, at which point they take a lot of shots. So at, at this point, Florencio is seeing if he can frustrate his opponent into thinking he's lost or thinking he can't win. And you got to remember, oh my God, another battle cruiser. Dude, he's got it down to 13 BCs from like 16. He's killed 11 battle cruisers this game. Did he lose 23? Yes. Does he have no upgrades? Yes. Are his Vikings doing two times 14 minus six or two times eight damage a shot, 16? Oh my God. I don't know what 550 hit points divided by 16 damage is, but it's going to take a lot of Viking shots to kill a, a battle cruiser, the, this upgrade disparity. But he's just being cheeky. And remember, Florencio is a master of pissing his opponents off, making them lose patience, and then they just lose their shit and they, they leave the game. So this here right now is Florencio going, I wonder if I can make this guy mad enough to leave. He's going to rebuild starports. I really would love to see Widow Mines because there's no orbitals, which means there's no mobile detection. There's not enough gas to build a Raven. McLean's going to teleport in the back. Well, that's a wild maneuver. Okay. He's going to clear these turrets out. I mean, he's got great upgrades, dude. He's taking so little damage. Even the missile turrets don't do that much to these BCs. Oh, one BC on the left. Oh, he loses a BC. Okay, gets the Thor. He's lost one BC, but I think that's acceptable. He's got so many. He's still got 12 battle cruisers, and he's just going to clear out a lot of these turrets. Now, he's used a lot of his Yamatos right now. He's going to go through, try to fight these like one or two at a time. That's still a lot of turrets. If you want to engage it, you got to engage it from the very edge of the line and just fight a few turrets at a time. But notice those Vikings are there, and he doesn't have teleport. Remember, remember what I talked about. Vikings can kite this down. Florencio, oh, he's doing some uh, interesting micro there. Clem saying, kite him, just shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot, move. All the Yamatos are gone. What is McLean doing? Oh my God, McLean. 
Oh my god, McLean's broken. Do you, what's he doing? Just chase him down. Chase him down and use... You've got other BCs. He's got four battle cruisers that haven't used Jamato or teleport. They could teleport behind this. Sandwich, that is literally nine Vikings with no upgrades. He should be able to easily click behind them. Just chase them. They can't kite you forever, especially not with Florencio's micro. McLean waits for the teleport and then gets out of there. He loses a whole bunch more battle cruisers. He's down to nine. Florencio is now going to float to a new base over here because this one's almost completely out of mining. Has he got money? His supply blocked, which is a big problem, but he's got a lot of money. I cannot believe. I cannot believe McLean is going to find a way to lose from here. He still should be winning because this base, you don't need to clear those buildings with haste. You, you just don't need to, right? Oh, he's got a blue flame alien. Oh, that's going to that's gonna cause some problems. And he just runs it away when the Vikings try to land. This is the perfect opportunity. Repair your battle cruisers if you can. You you can't. You don't have any SCVs. But grab them all. He's forgotten completely about these four battle cruisers in the top right. If McLean just does that, comes in with a Hellion, gets the Vikings there, and then just like teleport on top, or even just fly on top. If Florencio doesn't react instantly, he's gonna lose so much. Florencio is sitting on a 6k mineral bank for many, 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 like 10, 15 minutes, finally builds another command center. Oh my god. I, honestly, if he kills these Vikings, Flo will leave. Flo will have nothing he can do to get beyond that base anymore. All he needs to do is fly over Yamato, the, the healthy Vikings, kill the rest of them. Problem. One in red, one in orange battlecruiser. Turrets are being added. Florencio is adding interest. He's got so much money. He could make a billion turrets, but he just doesn't have any SCVs. I mean, he's got 14, actually. He's trying to repair there right now. He's got a few more building deepers. This could be the last fight of this game. This could be it. Can 3-3 three, three battlecruisers be defeated by a guy who is adamant about not making any upgrades? Yamato's coming on in. These Vikings need to lift off Florencio. He's losing Vikings, but the battlecruisers, he's clicking on the Viking. He's not killing the turrets. He's lost two of his BCs. He's only got three left. And he panics and teleports him. There's four BCs in the top right. They're right next to where you teleported. You absolute donkey. How does Florencio win this? <laughs> How? <laughs> You had won this game so many times over, McLean. How does Florencio do this? I mean, just talk about a man who is calm in the face of overwhelming odds. This man is actually... <laughs> I can't believe it. You've done it again, Florencio. Thank you very much, and I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Thank you very much for watching. A special thanks to everyone who's been supporting the Patreon. Don't forget to get early access to most of the episodes of the Francio Files, as well as support. Support the channel. Thank you very much, Max and Colonel SC, Apollo God, and Modern Totem. Thank you very much for the love, guys. Check out the Patreon in the link below the stream. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye and good night.